Hi everyone, as always welcome to Fusion Law School. So till now we have studied as to who can invest in India, what types of instruments can be issued to foreign investors and in which sectors FDI is allowed, prohibited or subject to certain conditions. In case of foreign direct investment, the investor and investee are residing in different jurisdictions. Therefore, FDI is always received through certain entities who are authorized to handle foreign exchange. These entities are called as authorized persons under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999, which is commonly referred as FEMA. In this lecture, we will be discussing the concept of authorized persons under FEMA. It is neither feasible nor efficient for RBI to do all transactions in foreign exchange by itself. In view of the same, the power to deal in foreign exchange has been delegated to authorized persons. An authorized person under FEMA is a person who is authorized by Reserve Bank to deal in foreign exchange. It is pertinent to note that these entities are properly regulated by RBI and they have to furnish details and information to RBI from time to time. Section 2 subsection C of FEMA define authorized persons to mean an authorized dealer, money changer, offshore banking unit or any person authorized under section 10 subsection 1 of FEMA to deal in foreign exchange or foreign securities. Section 10 subsection 1 of FEMA empowers RBI to authorize persons to deal in foreign exchange or foreign securities. Under FEMA, authorized persons can be broadly classified in three categories. First is authorized dealers, which can be further classified into three categories, which are A, category 1, B, category 2 and C, category 3. Second is full-fledged money changers and the third is offshore banking units. Now let's discuss each of them in more detail. Now we will discuss authorized dealers which is the first category of authorized persons. Authorized dealers mainly consist of entities whose responsibility is to remit and receive funds for all capital and current account transactions or some specific transactions as per RBI guidelines. Authorized dealers are further divided into three categories. Category 1 includes all major banks in India who are providing all current and capital account transactions. For example, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, SBI, etc. Category 2 of authorized dealers consist of upgraded full-fledged money changers, state cooperative banks, urban cooperative banks, regional ruler banks and other entities who are authorized to deal in non-trade current account transactions. For example, Cox and Kings Limited, Thomas Cook Limited, the Mahanagar Cooperative Bank Limited, etc. Category 3 includes selected financial and other institutions who are authorized to deal with specific transactions incidental to their foreign exchange activities. For example, Export Import Bank of India, Small Industries Development Bank of India, etc. Category wise list of authorized dealers is available on RBI website, the link for which has been provided below. Now we will discuss the second category of authorized persons that is full-fledged money changers. These are the institutes who facilitate purchase and sale of foreign exchange for private or business visit. For example, Tata Capital Forex Private Limited, Akbar Travels of India Private Limited, etc. Detailed guidelines relating to their activities are given in the RBI Master Circular on money changing activities. Now we will discuss the third and last category of authorized persons. An offshore banking unit is a financial service unit, normally a branch or subsidiary of a non-resident bank, which plays an intermediary role between non-resident borrowers and lenders. Generally, an offshore banking unit is located in an international financial center 
or in case of India, they are found in special economic zones. In a typical offshore banking unit, transactions are entertained in foreign currency only. They are allowed to accept deposits from foreign banks, from some onshore banks that permit deposits and other offshore banking units. Typically, an offshore banking unit may make loans to non-resident companies as well. SBI has opened the first offshore banking unit in India at a special economic zone in Mumbai. With this, we would like to conclude this lecture. I hope now you have an understanding of which entities are allowed to deal in foreign exchange or foreign securities in India. As always, if you have any doubts or queries about this lecture, please reach out to us on doubts at fusionlawschool.com. In the end, thanks for watching this video lecture. Hi viewers, to know more about us, please visit fusionlawschool.com or you can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Links are provided here. To stay updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. If you like this video, please like, share and comment down below.